Hey there, welcome to the Electronics channel. If you haven't already seen my video on the introduction to Darlington transistors or you don't know what Darlington transistors are, go take a quick look at that video because in this one I'm going to jump right into how you use or how you analyze a circuit when Darlington transistors are in the amplifier. Okay, here is a common collector amplifier that uses a Darlington transistor instead of a single NPN transistor. So to start off with, let's look at the DC analysis of this particular circuit. There is not much different from the DC analysis of a single stage NPN transistor. The only difference is we have one base emitter junction here and another base emitter junction here. So overall from the base to the emitter of the Darlington itself is going to be about 1.4 volts. So IB for this particular configuration, this fixed bias configuration is going to be DCC minus 1.4 volts, all divided by RB plus beta RE, where beta is the beta of the overall transistor, which is going to be a rather large number. So our, the IB is going to be potentially fairly small, especially when compared to a circuit where I used a regular, a single NPN transistor. IC is beta IB, and IE is approximately IC. I could say beta plus one times IB if I wanted to. VCE is going to be a voltage at the collector, which is VCC minus IE times RE. So pretty straightforward, pretty much the exact same as a regular fixed bias circuit. The only difference is the beta value is going to be much larger than if there was a single NPN transistor. So to complete this analysis, I want to do the AC analysis so I can see what is the relationship between my source voltage and the output voltage across this load and see what the advantage of the Darlington transistor is over a single NPN transistor. So I think to see the effects of using a Darlington, let's convert this schematic into the small signal model. Okay, so here is the small signal model of that circuit. And there's a lot of stuff going on here, but what we should keep in mind is this outer box is the Darlington transistor, and this inner box is the first NPN transistor, and this inner box is the second NPN transistor. Okay, here's the circuit redrawn without the outer box to hopefully make it a little bit clearer what's going on. Now basically what I wanna do is, is look at what happens when you have these two transistors back to back in this small signal model. And ultimately what we want to figure out is for this amplifier here, what is the input impedance, what is the output impedance, and what is the voltage gain? Okay, let's start off looking at these RE values. From the definition of RE, RE1 is going to be 26 millivolts divided by IE1, and RE2 is going to be 26 millivolts divided by IE2. Let's break this one down, RE1 down a little bit more. RE1 is 26 millivolts divided by IE1, but we could also write that as IB2. IE1 and IB2 are the same current. And if we write IB2 in terms of, of IC, we get 26 millivolts over IC2 over beta. Rearranging this to get beta on the numerator, we get beta times 26 millivolts over IC2. And if this beta is big enough, remember IC2 and IE2 are the same. So that means that RE1 is approximately equal to beta. Look at that. That is basically the same as that term. So RE1 is equal to beta times RE2. Now let's examine the input impedance. Considering that this is my source, the voltage and the output uh, output impedance. My input impedance is the impedance seen looking in here. So what I'm going to get is RB in parallel with whatever I see looking into the transistor. I'm looking into the base, so the resistance that is on the other side of the base and the emitter side is going to be multiplied by beta. Or more precisely beta plus one, but let's just use beta for, for simplicity here. So that's going to be beta times RE1 and then we're looking into the base of the second transistor so that's going to be plus another beta 
times RE2 plus RE in parallel with RL. Now if I expand this out, I get RB in parallel with beta RE1 plus beta squared RE2 plus beta squared RE in parallel with RL. Well, remember that RE1 is equal to beta times RE2. So that means R, the, the total impedance is going to be RB in parallel with beta squared RE2 plus beta squared RE2 plus beta squared times RE in parallel with RL. So I'll have that beta squared term in all of the expressions times 2RE2 plus RE in parallel with RL. Well, this beta squared term is the beta for the overall transistor. Um, I could call that beta D perhaps. So instead of beta squared, I could call it beta D for the, for the beta of the overall Darlington. And the effective little RE value is two times whatever the RE2 value is. So this is really the same analysis as with a single NPN transistor. The only difference is that we have a beta squared term instead of beta, but that's really just the beta of the Darlington transistor. And then instead of the little RE term, and instead of just a single little RE term, we have this 2RE2, but we could call that the little RE of the Darlington transistor as well. Now for the output impedance. The output impedance is what's seen from the load looking back into the circuit. So that is big RE in parallel with whatever seen looking back into the transistor. So that's going to be RE2 plus well, now we're going from emitter back to base. We divide by beta. So that's going to be plus RE1 over beta plus whatever's seen looking back into from this, from the emitter of the first transistor back into the base of the second transistor. So that's going to be, what is that? RB in parallel with RS, all divided by beta squared. Because I've got a beta from this emitter to this base and then another factor of one over beta from this emitter back into this base. Because beta squared or the, the beta D of the transistor is going to be so big, this term effectively becomes zero. This term here is RE1 over beta and RE1 is beta RE2. So the beta term goes away and we get Z out is equal to RE in parallel with 2RE2 which is just as we said in this previous step that 2RE2 is the effective little re of the, of the Darlington transistor. Finally, let's look at the gain of the transistor. Remember definition of gain is V out over V in. My output voltage is the voltage across this combination of RE and RL. My input voltage is going to be the voltage applied here at the base over all of these resistors here. So the voltage across RE and RL is IE2 times that parallel combination of RE and RL. While the voltage drop across all of these transistors is going to include that, but it's also going to be the voltage drop across RE1. So that'll be IE1 times RE1 plus the voltage drop across RE2, and that'll be IE2 times RE2 plus the voltage drop across RE in parallel to RL, which is the same as this expression. So consider that IE1 and IB2 are the same current. So that what that means is that IE1 is approximately equal to IE2 over beta. And also RE1 is equal to beta times RE2. So combining this expression and this expression leaves this expression to be equal to IE2 times RE in parallel with RL all over IE2 times RE2 plus RE2. This term right there came from this one. And then IE2 times this RE2 is that expression plus IE2 times that resistance. And we have the IE2 term on the numerator and on the denominator. So the voltage gain is equal to RE in parallel with RL 
divided by 2RE2 plus RE in parallel with RL. And if you recall from the common collector circuit, when there's just one NPN transistor, this is the exact same form, but I have a 2RE2 expression here instead of the original single little RE. But again, that 2RE2 expression, we've said that that is the effective little RE of the Darlington transistor. So that totally makes sense. So Darlington transistors, let's, let's look at, at what's going on with these Darlington transistors compared to a regular NPN, single NPN transistor. Well, on the input impedance, our resistance seen looking into the transistor is multiplied by a beta squared term instead of just beta like you would with the single NPN transistor. So what this means is our input impedance is, is going to be much higher for a Darlington transistor. The output impedance is low like it is like it is for a regular or single NPN transistor. And the voltage gain is effectively one, very close to one, like just like it is with the single NPN transistor. So the thing that you gain from a Darlington transistor is this high input impedance, and you don't really affect the output impedance or the voltage gain in any negative sense. So I hope this helps you in understanding Darlington transistors. Thanks very much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.